Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to install a DHCP server on Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. So all we need is a freshly built server and a little network diagram so we can see what we're trying to do. Uh, in this diagram, we can see that we have a DHCP server, a router or a gateway, and a couple of clients. So let's get busy. Um, the first thing to do is to have a look in our aptcast to see if we can find this DHCP server that we want to install. We can do that by cast search. And we can see that we actually do have an IAC DHCP server. So let's go ahead and install it. And this only takes a few seconds. The server is quite small. Once we, ins we have installed the server, let's have a look and see if um, it's up and running and doing everything it should be doing. And unfortunately, it's not. So, well, let's go ahead and see what gives. You probably just need to configure our server. Um, so the first thing I need to do is to have a look if our IP address is set up properly. Uh, in this instance, we got 172.16.0.0. 10 slash 24, which um, according to our diagram is what we want. So this is all good. We have just got our gateway set up properly and our address uh, name server addresses as well. So this is all good. Um, then we have a look at the actual DHCP server config it, uh, itself. So dhcpd.conf. In this file, you can see there are quite a few examples. There's quite a few things that the DHCP server can do, but uh, we are just going to do the absolute basics. So this is not a necessary step, but if you want to, you can change the search domain. Uh, in this instance, we can just call it uh, Linux um, recipes dot lab. That should be good. And there's one setting that we want to change around here somewhere. Um, it's called the authoritative. There it is. So let's uncomment this one and just hop down to the bottom of the file. You can uncomment the examples and work with them if you like to, but I'm just going to type this in uh, as we go. So what you need to define here is our subnet. This is the actual network that your interface resides on, the interface that is giving out IP addresses to other clients. Uh, we are 172.16.00 slash 24. Next thing to do is to define the range. Uh, the range of IPs that we're going to be giving out to our clients, so we go 172.60.0.50 to 100. Uh, you can have it smaller or bigger if you like to. We also need to define the default gateway for our clients. So you can see that we point it towards our router, uh, .254. Uh, we should set a few options. We need to set the subnet mask, which is 255.255.255.0 uh, or slash 24. Uh, we should set a domain name server as well. Uh, we'll just use uh, Google in this instance. And yeah, don't forget that we need to we need to finish all our lines and we need to put up a little curly bracket as well, as you can see in the examples above. So let's carry on and let's define um, timers. So we can go with the default least time. I can just give it 600 seconds and we should also give it a maximum lease time, we should just say 7200. These are the defaults that um, the DHCP server is recommending. You can put any figures you want in there. So once you've done that, let's go and have a look at the server again. So let's go ahead and uh, restart the server and see how it fares. So once the server has been restarted, let's check the status um, and see how it's doing. And we can see that the server is now up and running. It's screen, it says active running, happy days. If you have any issues with getting the server started, you can go ahead and have a look at the logs. Uh, we can look at the journal, uh, we do it like this. So it's journal, CTL, uh, minus U, ISC, DHCP, server. 
and this gives you uh, all the details that the, the server is trying to, to tell you. We can see at the bottom here that our server is saying server static service. That means that we are all good to go. So let's quickly have a look at the uh, lease list. Um, if you type in DHCP lease list, you get the list of IPs that have been given out. Uh, in this instance, there has nothing been given out as of yet, but the server is telling us to download this file uh, for the manufacturer names, which will come into the manufacturer column on your list. This particular file doesn't exist, doesn't work, so just use the URL that I'm putting in there. That will give you the same file, and it actually works quite well. Just make sure it goes into slash user slash local slash etc. So let's clear this out. Let's have a quick look at our lease list again. You can see that it's still empty. We haven't given any IPs out. So let's pull in our first client. This is a Windows 10 machine that is sitting on top of a VMware ESXi. We can have a look at the current settings. Um, we can see that it has uh, DHCP enabled as no, so that means it has a static IP. So let's go and fix that really quick. We go into properties and we go and find IP version four, because that's what we're playing with today, properties. And just say obtain IP address automatically, do the same for the DNS server and close this off. Uh, Windows wants us to do whatever, uh, just to say it doesn't really matter in this instance, we're not looking at this, so uh, let's just wait for this to finish. Now, we need to pull out uh, a new IP address from the DHCP server. We do that by typing in ipconfig slash renew and give it a few seconds and see, and you see that our second database here, we do have 172.16.0.50. And we can also double check it by necklace aids. And if you have a look at the lease list now, we can actually see that we have given out one IP address. We can see the MAC address and also that this is uh, out towards a VMware machine. Now, if we have a Linux host, we can do the same thing here. Uh, we use the hey client and just type in the interface to pull out an IP address. And we can see that we have 172.16.0.51, which is the next one up the line. And if we have a look at our lease list again, we can see that we have now given out two IP addresses. So that's how easy it is. Thank you all very much and see you next time.